Okay, so this is Genshin Impact, and to get around, one would use these contraptions, called gliders, a means of transportation for any wandering adventurer. And I do believe I really need one of these. Okay, so the basics that we'll be doing is cutting out EVA foam, a little bit of sculpting, painting on the colors and details, and then gluing the pieces together. Okay, so let the crafting begin. So, I made a line drawing of the gliders, and it is in the description below in A4 separate parts, like a puzzle, and we'll be using this to start our project. So, we'll be using the thin sheets of EVA foam, and we'll place that underneath the paper sheet, and then using a needle, we'll trace each separate part of the gliders so that it makes an imprint onto the EVA foam that is sitting underneath the paper. And you'll see these little dots imprinted into the EVA foam. Now taking a white pen or a white pencil, you can trace these little dots just to, just to make the shape clearer, just so we can cut it out later. As a kid, you would get those drawings that are just dots and then you have to connect the dots to make a certain picture. We're basically just doing that. Alright, now after tracing it, we can cut it out with the scissors. And then each individual feather, you're gonna have to do this process. You're gonna have to trace it and cut it out. And then after that, you're gonna have to do it again because there's two, just remember there's two wings. So you're gonna have to do this double. So you're gonna have to do this twice. Many dots tracing and cuttings later. We are left with all the puzzle pieces to create the base of the wing. Now I'm just putting the pieces on top of each other and then tracing where the pieces overlap. So for the little arrow shape, I'm just gluing the smaller arrow on top of the bigger arrow and then using EVA foam clay will be sculpting around it just to create a beveled look. Okay, so leaving the clay to dry, we can start painting. And we'll start with an orange base color. Looking back at it now, I should have probably started with a primer. You might want to do a few layers of the orange if you paint with orange first like I did. Alright, so after the base color is painted and dry, we can take a white pencil and just draw in those V shapes that you see on the feathers. This will only be on the last three feathers. Alright, prepare yourself because there is a lot of painting ahead. But don't worry if you don't have a lot of painting experience, just follow what I do and I'll try and explain as best as I can. Alright, so the next step would be sort of a shadow that is next to the V shape on the feathers. So what you'd want to do is take a bit of brown, it's like a chocolate brown, water it down a bit and use a very soft brush and then stroke it away from the tip of the feather and slowly build up that darkness. And then for the smaller feathers that don't have the v-shape on them you'd want to just use the same method but instead start at the tip of the feather and then work your way down slowly getting lighter so you want to do layer after layer just getting that darkness towards the tip but not too dark so just be careful 
at the end of all the shadows that they should look like this all right so now it's time for the lighter colors we're going to take a bit of cream like a cream color and instead of watering it down we're going to do the opposite you're going to take a soft brush and you're going to put a little bit of the paint on the brush and shake it a bit onto a palette or i use my hands it's just a habit and then you're going to try and make it quite dry so essentially you're going to be dry brushing and then you're going to very lightly just brush it over the top piece of the feathers creating a little bit of a dust almost all right now that that struggle is out of the way we can start with the v shapes Taking a, almost a golden yellow, gonna just paint in the V shapes that we drew earlier, filling them up with color. I actually had to do two layers to get it a nice solid color, so you also might have to do that. And then once the yellow is nice and solid, we're going to take a yellow ochre. It's like a, a darker, dirtier yellow. And then from the end piece of the V, not the tip of the feather, but the end piece of the V, you're going to work your way towards the tip. So it's like the darker brown that we did in the, in the beginning, but instead we're going to work into the yellow instead. All right, so now after all the shadows and the colors are in, I'm just going to add those diamond shape patterns at the tips of the three feathers with the V on it, using yellow ochre paint again. All right, so I'm going to be honest with you. This is where things got busy and I didn't look at this project again until many months later. So it's time to dust it off and wake up again and carry on with the rest. I'm sure you'll notice the change in camera quality and the scenery because everything is different now. Okay, so we can carry on with the ornamental piece that goes on top of the feathers. And for this, we're just going to stick the pieces together, make it one single piece. I just find it would be easier to paint this way. I just want to take a pen, the white pen again, and just trace where the holes are so you know where to glue it and where to position it correctly. So I use contact adhesive that you would usually use for leather because it works so well and it's very flexible. So if you cosplaying or anything like that, it's, there's no risk of it snapping off like super glue and it's watertight. Okay, so we're starting at the end of the piece. I'm not going to glue everything all at once as this does, the stuff does dry quite quickly. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue at the end and then attaching it to the base. And then from there, little bit by little bit, just adding more glue to the loose piece and then flattening it onto the base. <laughs> I keep messing glue on my hands doing this. And you guessed it, after gluing everything, it's time for more painting. Starting off with a base chocolate brown. And then here I'm just using a lighter version of the brown. So you just add a little bit of white to the brown and just highlighting the lower pieces that are sticking through. Okay, and then I'm just going to add a white primer on all of the pieces, but not on the base.
If you have a closer look, you can see that there are these orange glowy jewels, I believe, inside of the arrow and similar details in between. So to paint these, uh, you start off with the bright orange just as a base and then slowly you're going to add a yellow mixed with orange in the center and then a yellow yellow on top of that. So essentially you're creating this gradient from orange to yellow moving towards the center. For the darker segments of the base, I think it, they use a black, but to give it a bit more character and a bit more color, I'm using just a blue tint. And then just to map out the, the certain shapes, I'm using a very watered down paint gray just to give it shadows and so we can see the 3D elements showing on the ornamental pieces. Alright, after giving it some shadow, I'm just going to paint over all the ornamental pieces that you see are white, but I'm going to use like a dirty grey. It's almost, I believe it's like a grey, but has a little bit of yellow in it, a little bit of, little bit of yellow ochre and maybe some green. I'm not too sure what the colour name is, but I hope that helps. But moving towards the tip piece of this ornamental frame, you want to water down the color because you don't want it going all the way towards the end. You want to you want to create a gradient from this gray to a white towards the end, giving it that almost metallic look. Oh, this project has so much painting. I think I need a break from painting after this. All right, now that we have our base colors, I'm just going to use paint gray again and add more shadows, more striking shadows, giving it 3D looks and giving it more character, making it a bit more metallic looking. And now after the shadows, we are just going to use white and add highlights here and there. With everything painted and done, we're going to use the contact adhesive again and just put all the pieces together, creating the wing as a whole. Just remember you have to do this process twice as there are two wings on the gliders. Okay, so that's half of the entire project done. And I'm going to end it off there. And if you would like to watch the rest of it, just wait until next week from when this video is out. But if you want to add that little bit of extra to your Genshin costume, I also have a video on how to create your own elemental vision from scratch without any fancy equipment using the same similar methods that I use to make these wings. And for those who've made it this far, I would like to say thank you. I really appreciate all of the support.